Alex. You have been evicted. Yes! Yeah! I said, what a show. Again, what a show. Eh, what a show. Eh, what a show. I say, what a show. Eh, what a show. I say, what a show. Eh, what a show. Eh, what a show. Eh, what a show. Woo! Oh my God. Oh my God. What a show. What a night. Guys, listen, I know that a lot of people are actually upset right now, you know, um, watching me have fun, watching me dance this much, watching me, you know, do my thing. I get it, but I I'm sorry, guys. I mean, I can't just help it. Uh, yeah, I, I know, I know. We can't all be happy at the same time. I mean, um, we can't all have you know the same expectations especially when it comes to the live eviction shows but i know for a fact that um, tonight's live eviction show was kind of like the best for me this season yeah if you know what i mean <laughs> Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Gloria Elijah. This is Frankly Speaking with Gloria Elijah and I am the girl with the T. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's live eviction show was, it was explosive. It was insane. I mean, it was very obvious that a lot of us, the viewers, sort of already predicted, you know, how the eviction was going to be carried out. But personally, I was a bit skeptical because of how um, we've seen the eviction process, you know, carried out Sunday to Sunday, you know, sometimes we have a bottom two situation and only one person gets, gets evicted at the end of the night. Sometimes it's a bottom three and then maybe one person still gets evicted for the night. I've been kind of skeptical and I just decided to keep an open mind, especially with regards to tonight's um, eviction show, because for me, I didn't want to get my hopes too high and then end up getting disappointed. But thank you, Biggie! Biggie came through in a massive, massive way. Now, guys, we're going to get into all of the juicy tea, but I want to first inform all of you that the verdict is out with regards to Pere and Alex's situation that happened last night. I put out a video talking about it. I have been on social media the most part of today fighting wars against Alex's fans, of course. Hence the reason I gave them that dance at the beginning. <laughs> they used that one to step down with a chilled bottle of Guinness. <laughs> I'll smell up. I like being in petty mode. Anyways, as I was saying, um, Big Brother um, found Alex guilty of provocation. So it turned out that what we had actually seen last night was not even the beginning. Turns out that Alex was actually the first to physically assault Pere as she had aggressively dragged the duvet off Pere on that bed. <laughs> That was another thing that really heightened the trigger for Pere. Hence, the reason Pere had pulled the mattress off her. Yes, if Alex had not provoked Pere in that manner, Pere would not have seen the need to react the way he did. Although, I do not support the fact that Pere had actually dragged the duvet off her. And according to Big Brother, that could have led to Alex injuring herself. So Big Brother had issued both of them a strike each for violence. This matter actually escalated into a big deal today on social media. And I have a lot to say. And so this is me reminding all of you that on Wednesday by 7 p.m. WAT, we're going to be converging here for our live conversation. Please make it a date with us because there's a lot to talk about there is a whole lot guys this matter has gone over and beyond than just a mere situation between two big brothers housemates yeah there's a lot to talk about now um we're going to pause on that case for now and then we're going to fast forward into um the eviction matters for tonight let's talk about ebuka's interactions with the housemate before we get into the evictions and the housemate reactions as usual ebuka had started his um inquiries with cross right and um, he had congratulated him on emerging the head of house of the week also 
also congratulated him on um, emerging the first Big Brother Niger All-Stars finalist of the season. And then he had now questioned his ruling for the week as head of house. And guys, Ibuka pointed out the fact that Cross had the most fight he had ever had this entire season. Everything was just total chaos, which resulted in them losing their wager. And we know that as usual, Cross is full of excuses. So he gave excuses, which Ibuka did not buy at all, but that's on the side. Now, the next business of the evening that followed was White Money's eviction. Guys, see, the whole house was shocked. White Money, you have been evicted. Please leave the <laughs> I cannot believe my eyes. <laughs> Wow. You know, White Money is so confident, you know, about the fact that he's not going anywhere. And there's this thing he does for every Sunday where there is an eviction. White Money never packs his things. So tonight was the same thing, and the whole house was shocked. Even White Money was shocked. Guys, Suma's face <laughs> was the highlight for me. Perry was shocked. Guys, everybody was shocked. Everybody was lost. And I'm sure that Suma must be thinking that, ah, ah. A old white money ex winner has been evicted, and me, I'm still in this house. So it was quite shocking for everybody. But, anyways, white money got evicted. Um, when he got onto the stage to have his brief um, interaction with Ebuka, Ebuka had questioned him about whatever was happening between him and Mercy. And he has said that his feelings are confused as well. That, yes, Mercy has a boyfriend outside the house, um, they're going to fight it out. Yes, he's interested in her, he's going to fight it out with the boyfriend. I'm like, okay, fine, we'll see if he's joking or not. And then Ebuka had moved on to Venita with regards to the things she had said about Mercy this entire week. Yes. Now, Ebuka had mentioned, um, I'm just paraphrasing now, right? So he had pointed out the fact that um, they had started off this season as friends from the outside, but then their relationship has sort of gone south. And Venita has had more things to say about Mercy than to Mercy. In other words, she's been gossiping about Mercy behind Mercy's back. And Vanita had said, well, and she noticed one or two things about Mercy and she decided that the trust was gone between them. So she was going to stay in her lane and she felt like there was nothing they could talk about. And then because I was like, well, that, you know, coming from someone that is known to be able to speak her mind, you know, one would have expected that she would have said all what she had been saying behind Mercy to Mercy's face. Guys, that sort of, you know, held Venita's tongue for a bit. And it gave me a good laugh because Ibuka was right. You know, for someone that's always declaring, you know, her audacity, I was also expecting that she would have said what she had to say to Mercy's face. But instead, she would act like all is well and good when she sees Mercy. But then when she goes into her corners with um, Adekunle and any other person that cares to listen, she would say a lot of things about Mercy. And then we saw on Marshall's epic eviction. Oh my God, guys. Uh, Omashala is just a breath of fresh air and I am really glad and thankful to Big Brother that he was added to this season because Omashala brought so much color. He brought so much entertainment, he brought so much life and he brought so much energy to this season. I was watching Omashala's highlights and guys, it seemed as though I was watching an entire show of its own. It was mind blowing. I loved it. And I'm glad that Big Brother, you know, listened to his request because he especially requested that Big Brother do not send him out via the back door but via the front door. And then Elevery was not left out of the questions from Ibuka tonight. I mean, she has been on a long break and it was long overdue that she also received her own, you know, questions from Ibuka. Now, Ibuka had pointed out the fact that there was a unanimous agreement amongst the housemates that Elevery was fond of golden people. Yes, unapologetically. Now, I listened to Elevery's response and frankly speaking, it did not make sense, number one. Number two, you could tell that she knew what she was doing and it was more like a situation of, oh my God, I've been caught in the act. And that she had come from the angle of, hey, I think I misunderstood and I'm like, Ilibaye, I like you a lot. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the game you're playing. But what you're saying right now is cap. Yes, it is cap. Guys, we're sick and tired of housemates that come into the house and talk about, oh, I misunderstood. Bullshit, guys. Bullshit. But anyway, she was talking about, oh, eh, now that they have said it, I'm going to work on myself so that I don't offend people anymore. And I'm like, Ilebae, about three weeks ago, when Ebuka questioned you about something similar, I think it was four weeks ago, actually, after she had received her double strikes, Ebuka questioned her about something similar. She had talked about, oh, I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to try not to offend people anymore. But instead, she had intensified addition out of offenses in fact she's been serving offenses on a platter you know so when she said that tonight i'm like oh my god 
In other words, this week is going to be brutal with Ilebae. Because every time Ilebae says that she has learned her lesson, she goes back to her old ways and becomes even worse. And hey, I'm here for it. I want to see how the house is going to handle their situation. And then Neil got evicted. And frankly speaking, guys, I wasn't really surprised because it was one of those evictions that we kind of really anticipated 100% that was going to happen tonight. However, something that actually really caught my interest was Venita's reaction. Yes. Now, Venita just sat down where she was. Of course, Neil decided to use that opportunity to give a small speech. It was more like telling um, the housemates that um, they are all superstars when they come out of the house they should ignore all the beefs that they had in the house and work together towards a better life and future out of the house now Venita sat down where she was and there was this look on her face like what's this one saying she did not even make any attempt to go and hug her cousin there was nothing like oh my god my cousin is leaving the house she just sat down where she was now it was when people were now hugging you that she now stood up you know that kind of reluctant hesitant mm, let it not look as if but did not hug my cousin you no know. she now got up and was you know even sluggly, sluggishly walking towards him and then they had hugged and Neil had left now when Neil got to the stage to meet with Ebuka Ebuka had tried clearing the air about his situation with Tolani Badge Neil had put it out rightly that he and Tolani Badge are just friends that there's nothing romantic going on between both of them. I said, you, if you tell us that people are friends with benefits, we will believe you more. But this narrative about you, people are just friends, it's a bloody lie. Now, this next moment was quite hilarious. Evoca had gone ahead to expose Angel's letter. Now, this next moment was quite hilarious. Evoca had gone ahead to expose Angel as the writer of that letter that had caused chaos the entire week. Guys! It was Benita's facial expression for me. Benita was shocked because Benita was so certain that he was doing. And she had gone on and on and on talking about it, saying no manner of things about doing, said it in um, doing her diary sessions. She had, guys, she was so sure that he was doing. So the fact that Angel was sitting right beside her, guys, Benita was shocked. Her mouth was left open. Now, Ebuka had asked her why she had not told Venita, you know, when she had seen that the matter was getting out of hand. And she had said it was because that they could lay threatens to break the head of the person that actually did it. I said, if you push it, just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> but it was quite nice, you know, seeing that whole drama play out. Because, guys, we know that if it was Ilebaye, Venita would have torn Ilebaye apart and probably received the double strike. We know that if it was if he was doing maybe doing was still in the house and you know that revelation happened this house would have been burning by now but then it was angel and later was playing soft <laughs> as i push it just shifted to hypocrisy i beg now on to the sweetest hey the most delicious eviction of the night oh my jesus guys alex's eviction oh lord Father, I'm still, I'm still basking in the euphoria of it all. Guys, I think it was remaining just 10 minutes before the show in, ended. We all thought that that was it for the night too. That okay, or maybe we'll have to deal with another abusive female housemate in the house again this week. Mm. And then lo and behold, Ebuka announced that Big Brother wanted him to carry out another eviction. I say, hey, hey, who shall it be tonight? Is it going to be Mercy? Because we know that Ilebaye is not going anywhere. We know that CC Adekule, they are not going anywhere yet. So, guys, I was just, I was just chill. I was just waiting. I mean, Alex had already dressed up like she was gonna have a traditional wedding today anyway. So she was prepared, or probably just decided to give us a show. And that was Ibuka, you know, called her name. And <laughs> guys, the way I screamed, I scrammed. I scrummed, I scrummed, I scrummed. <laughs> hey guys! <laughs> See ya, guys. Listen, Gloria Elijah is not a petty person. I I'm not really a petty person. I'm not really a savage person. But I'm just, I'm just relieved that Alexis fans are gonna take a break off the show. I mean, it don't finish. It's over. <laughs> it's over. They should go and continue supporting their fave outside. It's over. And you see, the highlight for me tonight, right, especially with regards to Alex's eviction, was Ebuka's questions to her. Ebuka had asked her, that, okay, what was this thing that she was dragging with her that she refused to let go? And she said, 
It's not relevant. Before we get to that, what was this running battle with you and Pere that you couldn't get over? It's irrelevant. It is still irrelevant because you went on and on for about four weeks. My spirit just doesn't accept him, so that's it. He has too much bad energy. I don't like it. Okay. You no, know, with a rude self. It's not relevant. Erica was like, but you've been going on and on about this thing for four weeks. It's not relevant. I don't just like his bad energy. Da, 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 da. Guys, even the way she was even responding, I could even perceive the negativity from my from my apartment. I'm like, mm, leave my, my TV screen. And then Ibuka had asked her about her anti-bullying thing. Ibuka said eh, that uh, we are aware that you are doing your anti-bullying. <laughs> Anti-bullying foundation. Is that how we should look forward to what's next? I'm registered anti-bullying company. <laughs> I'm going to be expanding on that. Plus, I'm going out to check if I got the admission that I was looking for because I still have some courses to take before I can fully and globally expand my anti-bullying. Awesome. I said, Buka, you are savage. Okay, <laughs> Buka. You are wicked, though. I mean, guys, it was so ironical that someone who is the chief bully, in, or hey, English, you're not human, the chief bully of the season was being questioned about our anti-bullying course. Is it cause or cause or whatever she called it? And Alex too was explaining plenty English. She said, yes, I'm, I'm planning to have a show. Uh, I had to postpone it because of the All-Star show. And um, what was that thing she also said again? No. She said, uh, um, and I hope I've gotten my admission because I applied for a course and that's going to certify me as a bona fide anti-bullying activist. Hi, <laughs> Jesus. So I say, Alex, pray that the school you want to go and do that course, pray that they, not, they do not see all this nonsense you came to display on the show this season. Because, think about it. If they do, tell me why they will give her that admission. Tell me why. I mean, guys, I'm not even praying for anything bad for Alex, but guys, it's just the, it's the hypocrisy for me. You call yourself an anti-bullying activist, and you came on the show and you took it upon yourself to bully grown men. This girl bullied Pere like ruthlessly, endlessly. And guys, you see, yeah, when people that were serving his verdict over the issue that happened last night, Alex was painting herself the saint only for people to come and play the clip. And we realized that Alex was the one that threw the first assault. You know what, yeah? I'm going to stop talking here right now. I'm going to make more videos about all of these matters, all right? There's a lot more coming. So watch out for all my videos. But in the meantime, please go ahead and let me know your highlights for the evening. I'm in the comment section below. I'll see you guys on another video shortly. Have an amazing evening. Bye.